The power struggle that results when an influential businesswoman's political ambitions are threatened by her connections to the underworld could cost her everything. Alhaja Eniola Salami is a businesswoman and philanthropist with a murky background and a bright political future, and King of Boys tells her story. She is a cornerstone of society who is adored by many, despised by most, and only genuinely known by a small number of people. She becomes embroiled in a power battle that threatens all she values as her political ambitions cause her to outgrow the criminal connections that have made her so wealthy. She will need all of the guile, ruthlessness, and strategy that propelled her to the top, as well as the support of those closest to her, to emerge from this on top. But who can she actually depend on? Alhaja Eniola Salami, Sola Sabawale, is the titular king of boys in the novel. She sits at a table of gangsters and is required to receive a cut of any deals the other guys make. When Odegu Malay, Iblis, presented Makanaki, Reminisce, with a business plan, robbery, about stealing from politicians who are attempting to elude the whistle-blowing campaign by the Nigerian Anti-Corruption Agency, that is one of the moments that really got the momentum of this movie going. The robbery went off without a hitch, but because of Makanaki's egalitarian beliefs, they refused to send Eniola's share. The robberies were conducted out by Makanaki and Odegu Malay, who also recovered the stolen goods from Sokaway pits, Ghana must go, sacks, and a coffin. The political class interpreted Eniola's robbery as an act of insolence on his part. They made the decision to punish her and placed Inspector Gober, Paul Sambo, in her path. Eniola was initially detained but eventually cleared of all charges since there was no evidence connecting her to the acts she was accused of. Eniola meets with her political mentor Ara Akinwand, Akin Lewis, to voice her concerns about how the political elite is failing to support her and carry out their mutually agreed-upon agreements. Eniola has an outburst while the show is airing, which Ara ends abruptly by reminding her of her place in the world. Ara announces his intentions to name Kemi, Eniola's daughter, Adejua Itomi Wellington, as the Deputy Commissioner of Agriculture at the end of the meeting. Attempts to bribe Gober, the recently hired inspector, were used to incriminate Eniola. The family of Judge Nwachukwu, Nobert Young, was taken for ransom as a result of this new development, and she was imprisoned but soon released. As soon as Judge Nwachukwu gave his ruling and Kemi was found dead in the arms of kitten, Adadamla Adadoyan, in front of the court, Eniola's entire world came crashing down. When he went to see his lover Amaka, Sharon Oja, to get some relief from the stress, he discovered that she was working with the people who killed his sister. He as a result killed her and then, unable to comprehend what he had done, killed himself. This further damaged Eniola. The family of Judge Nwachukwu was also slain and placed on the freeway. Eniola surrendered to Gober after finding it difficult to deal with her trauma and sense of guilt. A heartbroken Eniola was also accused of being responsible for the murder and kidnapping that Makanaki committed alongside Ara Akinwand. In an attempt to force Eniola to plead for her life in vain, Makanaki set fire to her confinement. He also took responsibility for Kemi's death. Eniola fled to Brooklyn at the end of the drawn out movie, where she kept up control of her criminal empire. Thanks for watching and hope you've enjoyed the movie. Subscribe to our channel for new videos.